For a while now, my videos here on BewareCast have focused on the big Spec Evo projects that everyone with an interest in the genre already knows about. Books like All Tomorrows, Man After Man and Expedition are all excellent in their own unique ways, and when perusing their fascinating texts and gloriously weird illustrations, the minutes can quickly and easily turn into hours. But while these books I've just mentioned are the most well-known in the genre, and are what I personally consider to be the big three, they're certainly not the only ones in existence. There are other published works like Dougal Dixon's After Man, The New Dinosaurs and his elusive Green World published only in Japan, but speculative evolution, biology and zoology projects don't just come in book form anymore. Today there are lots of fantastic, lesser known projects that are released exclusively on sites like Instagram and of course on YouTube. This video will be focusing on four wonderful Spec Evo worlds that I've come across here on YouTube. I'll be listing them in no particular order, as I don't want to pick favourites and I don't want to arbitrarily rank them in any way, as they all have something special about them and they all bring something unique to the table. I'm very much looking forward to introducing them to you, and perhaps inspiring some of you to start work on your own projects too. The future of all entertainment, in my opinion, lies with the independent creator. But before we get started, I'd like to ask that you please quickly hit the like button, it's free and easy to do, and it helps me out immensely. Thank you. Now, onto the list. Number 1. Kappa, The World of Turtles it would seem that this one has become an immediate hit, with the first and only Kappa video having only gone live two weeks ago at the time of recording this. As the name would suggest, Kappa The World of Turtles speculates on what a world where turtles are the dominant species would look like. As stated in the Kappa video, a big inspiration for this project was one you likely already know of, Serena, which depicts a world where birds are the dominant species. From a production standpoint, Kappa is incredibly well done and looks very professional. The art appears to be done on a drawing tablet, and the science behind how a world like Kappa would work has clearly had a lot of thought put into it. It goes into the topography, geology and biology of this world in good depth and seemingly has an answer for any criticism that may come to mind when watching. I myself have recently been growing some of my own fruit and vegetables and as a result of my composting efforts, have recently been reading about the benefits of worms and how they contribute to the cycles of decay. So my immediate thought when the narrator, who is excellent by the way, told me that this is an entirely turtle occupied world was, ah, but what about soil creation? Is there a very small turtle species on Kappa that fills that niche? Well, it turns out normal worms do exist on Kappa, as do the lunar moth, the monarch butterfly, various microorganisms and triops in the water. So it establishes some ground rules at the beginning of the video regarding what does and doesn't exist here, and that allows the creator or creators to progress from there with showing the kinds of turtles and turtle-derived creatures that can exist on the planet Kappa. Number 2. Tales of Chimera. Next up we have Tales of Chimera, an original world building project by Keenan Taylor. This is quite a unique one, as there is a prevailing fantasy element to this world, a distant planet named Chimera which brings to mind such things as the Elder Scrolls series of games, World of Warcraft, the sword and sorcery works of authors such as Robert E. Howard, and of course the big one, The Lord of the Rings but these are just some of the things that came to my mind when watching, and I can't say which of these, if any, were inspirations for Chimera. Unlike the previously mentioned World of Turtles, Chimera seems to have been running for a while now, and Keenan Taylor uploads to his channel regularly, with each video looking at different geographical regions of Chimera and the flora and fauna found there. If you're looking for a new speculative evolution project to get into, then Tales of Chimera is the one for you if you enjoy the fantasy aspect. It's something I personally enjoy very much, and even if it isn't your usual cup of tea, you can't help but respect the amount of effort that goes into bringing Chimera to life and the amount of talent and skill that artist Keenan Taylor possesses. 
He has also made Tales of Chimere available in book form, which is something I would like to see more speculative evolution authors and artists doing. Nothing beats a physical book. Number 3. Cryptadia and the Lost Islands Cryptadia and the Lost Islands is another good one, an up-and-comer that has a lot of interesting ideas. The name of the project is a reference to cryptids and cryptozoology, another interest of mine, and the subject of my other channel, Cryptid Central. In this world, created by the artist known as Nightmare, the small island now known as Cryptadia was a part of the African continent in the Jurassic period, but during the Cretaceous period, it began to drift away, taking with it a multitude of prehistoric creatures such as dinosaurs, pterosaurs, reptiles and mammals, which, as a result of their isolation, would begin to evolve into strange new forms. I'm particularly happy about the inclusion of the famous cryptid known as Mokele Mbembe, a sauropod said by cryptozoologists to still exist in the present-day Congo. If you like dinosaurs, and I'm guessing you do, then you can't really go wrong with Cryptadia. Number 4. Dragons of the Cenozoic this last one also centres around dinosaurs and takes an approach that is an all too popular one among Specevo fans, and that is by asking the question, what if the dinosaurs never went extinct? This type of project has the distinction of being the one that probably requires the most restraint with regards to speculation, as we're starting off with creatures that actually existed at one point, and yet somehow still managing to be a lot of fun. The old, outdated ideas of the dinosaurs evolving to become reptilian-looking humanoids are nowhere to be seen here, as Dragons of the Cenozoic takes a firmly realistic approach to what various prehistoric species could have looked like if they had the opportunity to continue on with their development. So those are the four interesting Specevo projects I wanted to show you. As you can see, they're all quite distinct from each other in both subject matter and artistic style. I think there's a good chance that a lot of people's favourite Specevo work, All Tomorrows, is in some way responsible for the creation of these four fantastic projects, and while I can't say for certain just how extensive CM Kozeman's work has been on the preceding projects, I can say that it inspired me greatly, both in the creation of this channel in the first place, and also on my own Specevo project. Yes, I myself am working on something of my own, which I'll announce here and now. It is still in its early stages, but I can reveal to you that my speculative evolution book that I'm currently working on is called The Telescope, its subtitle being An Exploration of Alien Worlds from Earth. I'll give you a basic outline of what my book is about now. In the 25th century, mankind still hasn't managed to leave Earth in any meaningful way. We haven't colonised the stars or come across any signs of alien life whatsoever. It wasn't any kind of dramatic, apocalyptic event which held us back from achieving these goals. It was simply a question of money. Leaving the Earth was never, ever going to become financially feasible. The potential returns to be gained on any space quest were always outweighed by the initial costs of getting up there in the first place. Yes, in the far future, money is still an issue. All sorts of things were tried, all kinds of resets to the world economy were implemented in an effort to make space colonisation possible from a monetary standpoint, but nothing ever worked. All these measures ever seemed to achieve was a worsening of the lives of Earth's people. Mankind, it would seem, was destined to remain forever on one planet, never venturing any further. A world population that had spent centuries looking forward to the day when we would touch down on another world and make it our own, and envisioning humankind as a truly spacefaring species, slowly began to realise, to their horror, that it was never, ever going to happen. Earth's people grew despondent, depressed. They gave up. But all was not lost. Earth's best minds still worked tirelessly on the problem of space travel, and in doing so realised that radical changes in their thinking were necessary if they were to finally discover what lay beyond our world and dwelt in the vast cosmos. Finally, they hit upon a solution. One that was, in hindsight, a simple one, but one that had been entirely overlooked in previous decades and centuries. 
they realized that they couldn't possibly leave Earth physically, but they could still observe what was out there. It was put forward that, when looking up at the stars, the light from many of them was light emitted millions of years ago, but due to the incredible distance between them and Earth, the light had only just reached us. And so, it was concluded that, if we had an immensely powerful telescope that could zoom far enough in on that light, on the planets emitting or reflecting that light, then we would be able to see, through the telescope, what was happening on the surfaces of those planets. Of course, this method came with one major drawback. Everything being observed through the telescope would be things that happened many, many millions of years ago. Any species we managed to glimpse, any places that we managed to see, anything at all observed through the telescope, would all be things that, most likely, no longer existed. After much discussion, it was decided that this was the best and only option, and so the best and brightest minds on Earth created the eponymous telescope, an 11 mile high structure that could pierce all spatial boundaries and allow us to look upon the universe's magnificent wonders as if you and they were in the very same room, the crown jewel of human innovation and achievement. Though with all that said, it must be reiterated that what can be seen through the telescope are only the things that existed in times before humanity ever came into being. But what lies out there right now, possibly staring back at us, can never be known. And that's the basic gist of it. The telescope in question will be the device used to be able to see all different kinds of alien life that once populated the universe. I know the science of how all this works may not be exact, but I've never claimed to be an astronomer. I'm just trying to make something entertaining and enjoyable that'll possibly make people think and will contribute to the speculative evolution genre in some small way. The artwork is all done by myself using acrylic paint, pencil, pen and ink, and is done in a sort of abstract style. It may not be to everyone's tastes, but I do hope that some of you out there will enjoy it when it's finished and ready for public consumption. And that is it for this video. Please do let me know in the comments what you think about the fantastic Specevo projects I talked about today. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button, share this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And also, if you feel generous, you can become a member of the channel or sign up to my Patreon. Links in the description. I'd also like to thank my current members and patrons who can be seen here. This has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.